This is section 9, Resilience. In this section, we're going to take a look at the circuit breaker pattern, using rate limiters both on the client and the server, general concepts about resilience and high availability. Uh, this is video 1, Circuit Breakers. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is a circuit breaker and use it as a circuit breaker in our code. Let's consider the following problem. When we request another machine from our app, what happens if the other machine goes down or is incapable of serving requests? And now let's consider an even bigger problem. What if this machine is being restarted and the application that is running needs some time to get started and we continue making requests to it? This circuit breaker pattern is an answer to these problems. So what is a circuit breaker? A circuit breaker implements the following that can be modeled as a state machine. It has three states, a closed state, an open state, and a half flow state. When the circuit is closed, requests go through. If a request is sent and it succeeds, the circuit stays in closed state. If it fails, the failure is recorded by the circuit breaker and there is a function that after a certain threshold is met, opens the circuit. When the circuit is open, requests don't go through. After a reset, the circuit goes into half open state. In this state, a test request is sent. If it succeeds, it goes back to closed state and requests go through. If it fails, it reverts back to open state and requests are disabled till the next re reset. Well, that's really all there is to it, so let's look at some code. On the repo for this video, we have two, uh, a client and a server. On the server side, the only thing we have is a very simple server that has one handler that uh, for all requests. That handler takes a, a parameter that was set by a flag here that basically uh, establish the probability of failure per 100 requests. So what we do is basically we simulate a probability of failure per 100 requests. We basically, um, a random number of up to 100. If uh, the random number we get is uh, below the, the probability we have set, we actually send 500. And if it's not, we send an okay. That's all there is to it. We're doing this to test the circuit breaker. So what we're basically going to do is uh, we're going to start it in with a probability of failure of 50%. And then we're going to connect to the server with the client. On the client side, we're going to be using the package circuit breaker by Rubist. Uh, this package has a variety of ways to deal with, uh, with one to open the circuit. Uh, the one we're going to be using is a rate breaker. It takes two parameters, an error rate with an and and a number of samples uh, to test. This is generally the most common approach. We have the number of percentage of failures, and this is how much, what's the sample size that we'll be using to get that percentage of, of failures. An important note, the actual parameters you should use will depend heavily on the particular of your application. Uh, we're using this because it is, it's good for testing, for showing how it works, uh, these, these parameters. Uh, we're going to be running 5,000 Go routines. We're going to wait uh, before the start of the Go routine by 5 milliseconds. This means uh, we, will, we will be starting 200 uh, Go routines per second. And basically all we're doing is just starting a Go routine that calls, that calls uh, do get, which is where we have the, the request logic. So let's look at the call function. The important thing here is we are wrapping our logic inside call in the circuit breaker. We are passing the circuit breaker as parameter. The circuit breaker can be reused across Go routines, uh, so it's it's thread safe. And basically, that's the whole idea of it. And, and it will make sense if it weren't. And what we're doing is basically doing a get to uh, the server we have seen. If there was an error, uh, we're going to print the error. We're also passing the index of the Go routine here so that we can, we're passing it here uh, as index and we're passing it as index here. If there is no errors, if it was the request went through, we print the request success. Uh, the important thing is if, if there was an error, we record on the, on the circuit breaker that there was a failure. If there was a success, we record that it, that it was a success. After that, if the CV trip, meaning that it's, it's in open state, none of this will happen. When we do the call, the CV, the CV will be on trip state, so it won't happen. And then we're printing that the circuit breaker is open. Other than that, the other thing we're checking out if, if the circuit timed it out, we're also printing that if that happens. 
one last thing when the when the whole program is run uh we lock the error rate uh the final circuit breaker error rate this is a function on the circuit breaker uh so let's run it i have already started the server so now we're going to run the client and see how it works we're running the client as we can see request goes through then the errors goes through then the circuit breaker opens again you can see how how it's working i suggest you try all of this and let's see what was the final error rate and it was 0 0.59 something 